I'm Jay Klosterman. I'm with Monogram Appliances, and we're partnering today with Pacific Sales Kitchen and Home to bring this demonstration stage. We uh, have a real treat for you today. Uh, celebrity chef, Bravo Top Chef, and cookbook author, uh, Fabio Viviani. Ben I'm going to talk for him. L last year, his business was the fastest growing hospitality business in the U.S. 28 restaurants, 16 more to come. So uh, with this, let me introduce Fabio. He will be signing books just down here to your right after yeah. the presentation. He can tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah, Thanks, how everybody, are you for guys? coming. How you guys doing? Good? I like it. I see a lot of survival after last night's event. It was good. It's good. It's good. A lot of fresh faces. Um, how much time we got? 20 minutes, 30 minutes? All day. Yeah, all day. You, do, you might do. I got to fly to like 3.15. <laughs> uh, 30 minutes? 25. All right, great. So how's your stay so far? All good? You guys having fun? Very good, very good. So yesterday we had a great luncheon. Uh, we had a James Beer luncheon uh, supporting not only the James Beer Foundation, but also local food banks. And it's very important because... You know, we all having fun here. We drink, we eat, we party. But most of the proceeds, they, they go for a good cause. They're helping a lot of people that still today in almost 21st century, they don't get to have a meal per day, which is not cool. Um, so what we're going to do today, showcase, is something very simple. Yesterday, we did a spin on a, a Roman lattice on a wedge salad, right? So today, we're going to show you how to pull that together. It's hot. Summertime is coming out. Um, there is going to be the need for quicker, tastier, but still delicious dishes that you can pull off of your house in, in no time. All right. So first and foremost, we need a few ingredients. Now, I do believe that th th this recipe alone, it's very easy to follow. You don't, you don't have to write anything down. Yes, I do have cookbook and feel free to buy it, but... What I'm trying to say is that you don't necessarily need recipes all the time to be able to pull off really good dishes. I mean, Christ, I mean, my grandma, she didn't have a recipe. That was like gibberish. It was like, it's impossible to read it. It was like trying to read an Egyptian manuscript. <laughs> like a handful of these, a little bit of that. And, and you kind of got to ballpark it a little bit, right? So... What we have right here is uh, it's, a, it's a baby Roman lattice. Baby Roman lattice. Now, can you do these with something different? Sure. You can get whole Roman lattice, like grown-up Roman lattice. You can get iceberg. You can get lattice. You can get red radishes, radicchio. You can get arugula. You can do whatever you want, right? So what I'm trying to say is that recipe are okay. It's not a bad thing. You can have a recipe. It's fine. Nobody's going to hate on you because you got a recipe. But recipe are not the, the end goal. The end goal is just try to understand how recipes works and then just do whatever the hell you want to do. Because that's what you guys do anyway. So I literally have people messaging me on social media saying, bro, we love you, but that recipe doesn't work. And I'm like, funny you say that because I've used it for 20 years. It works for me. So... The, the changing of the ingredients is fine. R recipe really are like, how do I say this? Traffic laws. Think about it. <laughs> right? No, I'm not trying to make fun. Okay, no, let me explain you this. Is there, any, is there any police officer or highway patrol in the audience? Anybody? It's a, it's a crowd of, no, no, no law enforcement in the audience. Okay, great. So you're going to understand anyway what I'm trying to say. Let's assume that what's the freeway that gets you here? What's the, the 10? What's the speed limit? 55. You said 75. He said 60. <laughs> she said 90. Are you guys on crack? What's the speed limit? That's not an opinion. 70. Oh, God, Lord. Thank you. Somebody, I don't look at it either, but somebody's got to know it. All right, 70. Fine. So let's say it's Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. And there is not a damn soul on the freeway. Can you go 75, 80 and still be fine? 
All right, great. Now, it's Friday afternoon. There is traffic. There is bikers. There is motorcycle, and, it, and it's raining cats. Is it safe to go 80 or 70, or you might need to go 35, 40? You see what I mean? It's up for discussions. So traffic laws, just as much recipes, are guidelines. They're up for discussions. You could argue with any highway patrol about 5 or 10 degrees of variance in the speed limit. You could. And same things with recipes. You know, you don't have to use the exactly things I'm telling you. Now, of course, if you do, it's probably more likely to work out. But it's okay if it doesn't because guess what? You got to eat it, not me. So you can change whatever you want, all right? So here's what we got. We got some mayonnaise. May I, there is nothing wrong with mayonnaise unless you buy it. Let me explain this. Anything, anything. And I love mayonnaise. I'm a sucker for mayonnaise. And so I have the mayonnaise in the jar at my house. But anything that lasts six months in the refrigerator without going bad, shit can be good for you guys. <laughs> so how do we make a healthy mayonnaise that tastes like mayonnaise? It's very simple. It's eggs and olive oil. A little bit of vinegar and salt and pepper. That's it. It's so easy. And if you buy, you know, grass-fed organic eggs and you buy, you know, anything, good ingredient at this point, you're going to get a lot of olive oil. And olive oil is good for you. The crap that is not good for you in mayonnaise are all the preservatives, the stabilizers, all the crap that make this thing last six months on a shelf, more than six months, a year. I don't I haven't heard mayonnaise go in bed, actually. <laughs> so these things is like ancient, like, whatever. So let's make the base for a good wedge salad. It's a, a solid mayonnaise. Now, I grew up in Italy, and still today I have a chicken coop. Eggs, different from popular belief, are not require refrigeration. The only eggs, the only eggs that you want to refrigerate are the ones that you buy at the store because they have been processed, chemically washed, and all this crap that consume the coating of the yolk. In a normal scenario, when you have a chicken coop, this thing sits underneath the chicken's ass for up to a month. And it's still good. You see what I mean? So eggs are good. There is no fear in raw eggs. If you still are uncomfortable in eating raw eggs, then to make your own mayonnaise, buy pasteurized them. I'm not going to unfriend you from Facebook if you do that. But just know that there is nothing wrong with eggs. You know, it's common sanitation products. Wash your hand, not cross-contaminate, the things that they teach you in 101 class in culinary school. Just have common sense. So the best way to make mayonnaise is four egg white, two egg yolk. Let me show you. So two egg yolk and two egg white, clearly two eggs, right? Now we're going to add two more white. And you can buy pasteurized eggs for doing this. This is exactly what they do in your mayonnaise at home or in the mayonnaise that you buy in the jar. So if you go like, oh, my God, that's not raw eggs. Yeah, you've been eating raw eggs your whole life, and you didn't even know about it. John Lee Industry, mechanically and big manufacturing, they do with pasteurized eggs because they have different regulation from normal people that try to make a sandwich at, at home. You see what I mean? So now you got that. So now we have, um, so we got that. I add a little bit, just a little touch of Parmesan to my mayonnaise. Not because cheese goes in mayonnaise, but because I'm doing this for a salad. So in this instance, I'm adding a little cheese to it. Now I'm going to leave it aside for a second. And I also have some truffle paste. Now what's truffle paste? The truffle paste is, it's, the intelligent answer to truffle oil. 
truffle oil is chemical. Nothing wrong with it. Once in a while I spray it on my french fries, whatever. But, but truffle oil is chemical. It's not real. It's essence. It's aromas chemically produced. If you want real truffle oil, have some truffle and blend them with olive oil and let them sit for a day or two. Now you got truffle oil and truffle paste. So now here's what we got. I got the eggs. And this is, by the way, the salad has uh, blistered cherry tomato, which I will show you in a second, pickled red onion, and uh, pork belly jerky. Now, hi. Then you get your extra virgin olive oil. Do you have some salt? I don't see salt. It's right here. It's a sugar, sorry. Extra virgin olive oil. The eggs are going, right? Guys, I'm just saying that talking about mayonnaise composition, 95% of mayonnaise is oil. Might as well get good olive oil, and now you have a good or tablespoon or two of delicious olive oil, which is good for you, and it's not the crap that you eat out of a jar. Salt. Now we're going to add a touch of vinegar and now we're gonna add more oil Now, you have done the most beautiful, do we have, a, I don't have spoons, do you have spoons, do you guys have spoons somewhere, yep. where, that's all right, you know what, I'm going to work with this. I wish I had a, a wooden spoon one. I grew up with wooden spoon. Remember? If you're Italian, you have memories of wooden spoons. <laughs> Mood adjustment devices. That sometimes they were used for cooking too. All right, so look at these guys. Ready? I just made a beautiful, beautiful mayonnaise. All right? And you can make it thicker if you want to. All right, now here's what we got. I got two things right here. I got two things right here to do. One, say it again. I can't hear you. You make thicker by adding more oil. The more oil you add, the thicker it becomes. And it's going to get to a point where you can flip the things and it doesn't go out. But I like a little thinner because I'm going to pour underneath and add a few other things to it, right? So are you guys going to get me some spoons? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Now let me operate this induction machinery here. Look at that. <whistles> Wooden one. I got this. It's perfect. All right. One and two. One and two. I feel like whenever I have induction, I feel like I'm cooking on an iPad. <laughs> I can't handle it. All right. Now I'm going to blister some tomato. So now that we have these, I'm 
I'm adding a little bit of cheese to it. I'm adding some green onion. I'm adding the truffle paste, which is nothing else than truffle pureed with olive oil. Now we're going to get this out of there. Now you got a nice truffle, truffle dressing. It's a mayonnaise base. If you want it thicker, you can get it thicker. If you want it thinner, get it thinner. Just by adding or subtracting olive oil that you do that. So now here's what's going to happen. Look at this. I got my uh, salad. Take a couple of extra leaf out. Don't throw this away. This is compost. Or just eat it or do something with it. Don't throw them away. I have to throw them away because I'm not going to eat it right now. But you don't. Knife. I'm going to cut this in half. And fourth. All right. Go like this. So you have different ways to go about it. You can brush the salad with the dressing like this. Like I do in restaurants and make it a little fancier. So I can charge more for it. Like this. <laughs> you get that. You get how you think that food cost is going to take care of himself. Right? So the, the nice dressing is going to go into the leaf. And everything is going to be nice and seasoned. There. Then we're going to add the This works, right? It's working. You sure? Cuz I don't see flame. I'm on. Why is it red? Why is it red now? This one. Do you want this one on? I would like that. I'm on. Be careful, I don't want you to get hurt. See, I don't trust technology, I don't. I'm a pigeon kind of guy for letters. I'm an old, like, uh, you know, the phone with the doo -doo -doo -doo. And you go like, then you gotta wait for the zero to go all the way back before you can. I like that kind of phone. So blister cherry tomato. Then we're gonna get some red onion, pickle red onion. Pickling anything is very easy. Now, when you wanna pickle anything, you gotta do 50% Red wine vinegar, 50% water or white wine vinegar, depending on how strong you want your pickling juice, sugar, and aromatics. Aromatics could be mustard seeds, garlic, oregano, spices, anything that suits your palate. Bring that to boil, and once it boils, Pour that over whatever vegetable you would like to pickle, whether it's onion, carrot, celery, anything, and let it cool down with the vegetable inside. So the vegetables are not boiled in the marinade liquid. They sit overnight, but they get shocked from the hot liquid and gently cook. So the liquid penetrates in the onion or whatever else you have, but it doesn't overcook them, so they're not mushy. I like that. So you get that. Then now, the way you do bacon jerky is very easy. You get pork belly, which is bacon, pork belly, bacon, same thing. It's the exact same piece of the beast, just cut in different ways. Uh, bacon is sliced thinner. So in this case, sliced thicker. Cook that in the oven, whether you cure it or not. Roast that in the oven, then let it cool down. The next day, the pork belly is going to be nice and cold. And now you got all the fat that they're very hardened. Now you can slice it with a knife in a nice thick slice. And then you sear that until it's so crunchy that feels like, that feels like uh, um, beef jerky. All right? It's delicious. So we're going to do that. This is my salad, so I'll put this on too. <laughs> Blister cherry tomato. 
Then we're going to do a little bit of gorgonzola on top. A little bit of gorgonzola. A little bit more olive oil. And now here's what. Look what I got here, guys. I got to show you something. I got to show you something. <clears throat> if you have a salad to season, it's fine. Get yourself a pepper meal, right? But yesterday, I had to do this for 500 people. And I'm known for two things. One, I know how to run a restaurant. Two, I fix things. <laughs> it's missing the drill bits. So I can't use this because it's missing the drill bits. So what I did yesterday, but I can't do right now, you know a normal screwdriver, right? If you put the drill bits in here, this is missing. I don't know why. But if you get these and you screw it on top, and then you go like this. Yesterday we were literally going around like this. And we seasoned 500 dishes in literally three and a half minutes. And all the kids from culinary and all the kids from culinary school, they were just their draw just dropped. Because literally they got 14 kids from the culinary institute, one by one, all the salad like this. Like one by one adjusting the pepper grain on. And I'm like, like I'm machine gunning the whole delicious. So that, and then you got your, <clears throat> and then you have your um, your peppers here, your uh, tomato. Now you got a gorgeous, delicious salad that takes no time. And now you can save your dressing and you can do whatever you want with it. It'll last for a while in the refrigerator. Guys, do you have any, <coughs> you have any question for me? Yes, ma'am. How long will that last? Fresh eggs for one week, pasteurized eggs, just whatever is the eggs expiration date, right? But what I suggest you, which is very easy, get uh, that in a Ziploc bag and pop it in the freezer. And you'll last for a very long time. <laughs> you can make whatever you want. Yeah. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? No questions? All right. Yes, please. Say that again. Going back to Top Chef? I lost it twice, bro. I think, I think I'm good with it. I don't believe in the third is a lucky charm either. Uh, <coughs> look, the first time around I got to the finale, whatever, they asked me to cook a French Creole inspired dinner and I just did a six course Italian feast picked my bottle I lost I'm a go I went out swinging I like that the, the next round I, I just couldn't figure out how to make a burger that was worthy of Jimmy Fallon <laughs> I mean think about it Jimmy Fallon said that my burger wasn't good which okay it's annoying but if like Danny Mayer would have said that I would be a lot more upset you know what I mean? It's like a mechanic telling a florist that the roses are not nice. I mean, how do, what do you know about burgers? Anyway, with that said, um, Top Chef is great exposure. And if I were to consider in doing that, I would do under the circumstances of me in need for more exposure. But we have so many restaurants right now that, I mean, we're in the press and media every day. And I, I don't have time to be seven weeks with a bunch of people trying to win a competition, I just don't have that kind of time anymore. Um, but it, the, the whole experience was great. It was fun. It was a blessing. I mean, a great exposure if you look good. If you don't look good, most people regret that they have done that. But it's kind of TV. You know, you got a bunch of millions of people watching. If, you, if, you, if you're kind of a dick and people don't like you, <laughs> that it kind of sticks with you. You know, I know some, I know several folks that they're not, too thrilled about the outcome that they got out of Top Chef. You see what I mean? I was the fan favorite. Thank you for voting. I hope you did. 
I, I had somebody this morning was like, oh, my God, you're Fabio's fan favorite. And I'm like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And he goes like, no, I voted for Carla. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> Seriously? I'm like, why would you even say that at that point, you know? <laughs> thanks. Thanks for pissing on my parade right now, dude, really. But by the way, you're awesome. I hated you, but you're awesome. Like, what? I'm like, what the? Who, who said that? I mean, like. Any, any other question? Yes, sir, please. I, last one. My closest restaurant to here is Cafe Firenze in Moore Park, and I have uh, Osteria at the Los Angeles X Airport, and everything else we, we got to get into the Midwest or Florida or, yes. My favorite restaurant in Florence, I own three restaurants there, so mine. Um, <laughs> One is called Osteria Tre Panche, delicious. It's a 17-seat restaurant. All we serve is the highest food you've ever had in Italy, truffle, expensive wine. Then I have Touch Bistro Toscano, and then I have uh, another restaurant by the stadium. If you ever go to Italy, by the way, all you got to remember is the word info, like info at, and then you put my name, FabioViviani.com. If you ever go to Italy, send me an email, Info at FabioViviani.com, and I got a list, true. And I got a list of people you want to see, a list of places you got to avoid, and a list of people that if they come up to you, tell them, no, I'm not interested, thank you. <laughs> guys, thank you very much. I'll see you all here. We have a little book signed. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, just a reminder, the book signing will be out here to your right for Fabio.